going to do the needed available shared method for NH3. So this has a common name of ammonia. And if we do the needed, we've got one nitrogen, so that's eight electrons. Plus, when we have hydrogen, we have to treat hydrogen separately. So there are three hydrogens. Each hydrogen only needs two. So we get a total of 14 electrons. When we look at the available, nitrogen has five valence electrons and hydrogen has one. So the available, we've got five electrons from nitrogen and three times one electron for a total of eight electrons. We subtract and get six electrons, divide by two, and that means our structure is going to have three lines. When we draw this, we're going to put nitrogen in the middle and three lines connecting three hydrogens. So I'm going to do this, a hydrogen at the end of each line. And then we're going to make sure there are eight electrons on the picture and that everything's happy. So nitrogen only has two, four, six electrons around it, so we'll add a lone pair here. And remember, hydrogen can't have lone pairs. So we've got eight electrons. To, needs to be on the structure, two, four, six, eight. So in this case, uh, we're already finished. The shape of this one because there are three atoms and one lone pair of atoms on the central atom is going to make this trigonal pyramidal. Remember, we can think of that lone pair as the top of a pyramid. Okay? So I'm going to do another example. And we could do an example for HClO. This is actually an acid. Whenever we have an H written first, that means we've got an acid, but we still can draw a dot structure for this. The needed, because of that hydrogen, that hydrogen only needs two electrons, plus eight electrons for the chlorine, plus eight electrons for the oxygen. So this is a total of 18 electrons. Now the available, again we need to look at the periodic table for that. Hydrogen has one, chlorine has seven, and oxygen has six. So for the hydrogen, one electron is available, plus seven electrons, plus six electrons. So that's a total of 14 electrons. We subtract, we get four electrons, and divide by two. There's only going to be two lines on this structure. And we cannot put hydrogen in the middle, so we go to the next atom and we'll put chlorine in the middle. And two atoms bonded to chlorine, we can put the H on one side and the O on the other side. And we're going to need 14 electrons on our picture when we're done. And everything needs to have eight electrons around it except hydrogen. So chlorine, we're going to put two lone pairs there. And we'll put three lone pairs on this oxygen. Because that oxygen only has two electrons around it. And we'll double check to make sure there's 14 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So this structure would look like this. The shape, even though we've drawn the shape linear, this shape is going to be bent because there are lone pairs on the central atom. So we may have drawn it linear, but what makes something linear is that there are no lone pairs on the central atom. Okay. I'll We'll do one more structure here. If we were to draw this, let me do that really quick. The book may show this with the O and the lone pair here and here. And remember, it's going to have this shape 
because all of these electrons are going to be pushing away from each other. So when there's this many electrons around the central atom, even if we've drawn the structure as linear, these electrons are not exactly above and below the chlorine, but they're off kind of side to side in a three-dimensional structure.